The gentle snowfall continued throughout the evening and up until the morning, completely coating all of Ponyville in a blanket of white. Normally, this would not have posed a problem for the early morning traditions of the Apple family at all. Especially since it really mattered on this particular day to depart to Manhattan. Unfortunately, the cloud cover was grossly thick and inhibited all rays of sunrise that could have awakened the family. Most of the corral's critters had been hauled away previously to spend winter at the Appaloosa Ranch. Thus, there wasn't a chance of the cows nor Winona awakening the apples either. The hen house still held occupants. But their reliable rooster had decided to spend the night on the town. At least, that's what the rooster would say if it could speak. Truth be told, the hapless recluse was kicked out of the chicken coop by its own hens and left alone to sleep in the snow. It was now ten minutes before the train would depart that the rooster finally arose. As it realized the grave folly that was committed. The rooster unleashed an unholy crowing that caused even the heaviest of sleepers to launch skywards. A <laughs> timber wolf are howling! Granny screeched in shock, bolting upright in her bed. A timber wolf are howling! The combination of the rooster and Granny Smith's shouts echoed loudly through the farmhouse. Every pony was soon awakened by the strange chorus and immediately responded with a cacophony of complaints and expletives. Every pony! Applejack shouted over the boisterous din. Her relatives all halted their tirade, save for Grady's hollering about the Timberwolves. The orange mirror glanced at the grandfather clock opposite her bed prompting double-taking when she saw the time. We slept in! Every pony up and at him! The train's about to leave! Well, no! <laughs> Her call to arms heralded more shouts of surprise as the whole home tumbled into turmoil and utter anarchy. Foals and elderly ponies stampeded through rooms to fully prepare each other. The madness reigned for a good two minutes any created messes were simply left in order to catch the train. Amidst the hustle and bustle, Applejack collided with her big brother in the hallway. <coughs> the impact left them both dazed for a moment, but the red stallion hurriedly shook his head to clear the phase. Got the tickets? Granny's got him! I'll get the luggage! You make sure every pony is ready! They parted sides instantly, almost leaving small puffs of dust behind themselves. Most of the Apple family had already fled the home in hopes of delaying the train for the rest of them. Big Mac began tallying every relative, making sure that every pony was accounted for. The large buck pondered for a moment, suddenly remembering his youngest sister. Bushy core, go get your cousin Apple Bloom! What? Big Mac smacked a hoof against his face. <sighs> Despite the young false earlier claim of not wetting the bed, it was obvious that he was dilly-dallying with a horrendous attempt of removing his evidence. Your cousin, Apple Bloom! Go get your cousin! He shouted, straight away turning around without a confirmation. Mushikor remained where he stood while processing what his big cousin had asked of him. Go get cows in? This place gets weirder and weirder. Needless to say, the request was lost on him. The home was soon emptied of every pony, including Granny Smith, who was still on full alert for Timberwolves. Without another word, the entire Apple family sprinted off in maddening speeds to the train station. Miraculously, the train was still loading. In the back of his mind, however, the conductor could only wish that he left earlier as he witnessed the giant cloud of kicked up snow fast approaching. We're here, we're here! Don't leave! The conductor clicked his tongue. Cutting it a bit close, are we? He asked as the family completely filled the station's loading area. This train has to leave right now! <sighs> here are your gold darn tickets, sonny! Now out of the way! 
I gotta get my morning nap. Granny crinkly hollered. She unloaded the bundle of paper, which unceremoniously burst apart upon the surprise conductor. Seeing her job was done, the elderly mayor stepped onto the train and promptly passed out on the first open seat. Applejack smiled sheepishly at the fuming conductor. <laughs> Sorry about that. I promise you, though, we have all the tickets we need here for every pony. The orange mayor stated, leading the rest of the family onto the train. Oh, fine! Just get onto the train! The conductor exclaimed in frustration. While he knelt down to retrieve the fallen tickets, all of the apples proceeded onto the train and seated into empty spots. Sheesh. Some ponies. Regardless of their morning mishap, the family had managed to arrive just in time as the train gently carried them away. Everything was going to work out. Or so they thought. Apple Bloom blearily blinked away the blurs in her vision. She had at last awakened on her own accord after a surprisingly fantastic night of sleep for the young filly. Even though she was in the barn, the formidable blanket fortress she had somehow constructed during her slumber was quite comfortable over the hard-packed floor. Not only that, but it had muffled any noises that may have disturbed her through the night. That, of course, applied to the loud ruckus that occurred just moments ago. She yawned and stretched out her hooves as she emerged from the cozy chamber. Yup! Today's gonna be a great day! Wait! The yellow filly paused in mid-thought before merrily exclaiming, Today's the day for Heartwarming Eve! Yay! At her jovial shout, Applebloom's stomach seemed to protest as it loudly rumbled. She blushed lightly and rubbed at her small tummy. It was breakfast time, after all. The young filly proceeded out of the barn with a spry spray in her step. I wonder what Granny Smith made for breakfast. I bet it's something real tasty since every pony's here to. Once more, Applebloom's line of thought halted as she remembered the evening's events. Perhaps she had made a few erroneous judgments, but she felt that she had been wronged herself. Mushnikor had eaten all of her zap apple jam and he wasn't even punished for it. However, Applebloom felt confident that everything had smoothed out. She was going to walk right into the kitchen and have a magnificent meal. Only to find the kitchen was completely devoid of any and all ponies. Applebloom cocked her head to the side, confused that no pony was around. Green Smith? Applejack? Where y'all at? She called out. When no immediate response reached the filly's ears, she trotted forward into the living room. To her surprise, no pony filled in the previous non-vacant room as an eerie quiet met a tiny, investigatory earth pony. She bit her lip in befuddlement. Big Mac? Brayburn? Applebloom asked aloud. Yet still, there was no reply. Hello? Any pony? Her unanswered interrogations continued. She even uttered one more question, quietly. Mushy core? In honesty, though, she wasn't disappointed that he didn't yield to the call. However, the mysterious absence of every pony but herself within the home was absolutely baffling. She carefully sat on her haunches and tried to piece together what she already knew. Without a doubt, her family would not have just left her behind while they vacationed. One does not simply abandon their loved ones on Harp's Warren Eve. Yet here she was, alone in the home with no pony to bug her. It led her to believe from all the evidence before her that there was only one 
possible deduction. My wish came true! Apple Bloom yelped. The impossibility of it all resonated through the small filly's mind. How an equestria of such a desire as wanting to have heart swarming Eve to herself could actually be granted was beyond her. Then again, some wishes do come true now that she thought about it. Thus, she sat and mused about what this entitled. It would have been nice to have her friends around with her, but both Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo were away in Canterlot. On the bright side, though, she had the house completely to herself. Plenty of space, no scolding, no mushy core. After a few moments, a small grin soon creased across Apple Bloom's muzzle. I'm alone, and there's nobody around that can ruin Heart's Warm and Eve! Time to deck the halls! Humming the only tune that could probably fit the forthcoming montage, the little filly set off to create the greatest Heart's Warm and Eve ever. Raiding the storage room for cider, unboxing a plethora of decorations, donning several garments at festivity, and all sorts of acts of merriment, not to mention swinging from the ceiling by use of long garland. Soon, the house was decorated inside and out with all things Hearts Warming Eve related. Even the fake cheesy Wendigo lawn ornaments were posted on the front yard. Their whimsical design and foolish caricatures amused Apple Bloom, but would drive any normal pony to groan inwardly. Wreaths, candy canes, strands of popcorn, wrapping paper, lights, holidays, oh my! Indeed, the filly was quite content with her holiday cheer. She had finished decorating every square inch of her home and could now sit back and relax with a nice, frothy mug of cider. The afternoon had passed splendidly, and the sun was setting on a great day. Things were going her way. That is, until she heard a pair of voices conversing just outside on the porch. What's all this mismatch? Their house wasn't decorated last night. For some reason, Apple Bloom recognized the accent behind the stallion outside, but she couldn't place who it could be. Cautiously, she crept closer to the door and listened closely. Maybe they potted up a fountain this morning? Like the former, his voice also sounded familiar to the little filly. Alas, she was left pondering as to who was standing outside and what in Equestria they could want. A quick scoff soon emerged from the first stallion. <laughs> They may be impractical, brother of mine, but they're not stupid. Why would they do that when they were leaving town today? I bet it was a kiddo. Bulls are idiots, after all. You're an idiot, Flip. Now help me get this door open. Before Apple Bloom had a chance to move away or react at all, the front door soon burst open. She squinted immediately. The contrast of light between the house and outside quite disorienting. After a moment, though, her vision returned. Oh, how she wished it hadn't. There, before the small filly, stood the unmistakable forms of Flim and Flam. They still wore their trademark hats and vests, but had bundled up a bit more for the cold and snow. The one-time rivals of the Apple family were back again, and Apple Bloom could scarcely think of what they wanted now. You! She quickly yelled, pointing a hoof towards them. You? They instantly replied, as they recognized the filly. Flam pounded a hoof against the porch, irritation burning fiercely in his eyes. You're supposed to be out of town, you little brat! the tall stallion accused. His red mustache bristled as his lips formed a grim sneer. How did you- Apple Bloom started, but paused as she pieced together why else she recognized his voice. Her jaw dropped as she uttered a gasp of realization and exclaimed, <gasps> That was the patrol pony who was here last night! 
Flam bit his tongue, seething more at the yellow filly. Flim raised a brow and glanced at his brother. Guess she's a smarter cookie than we thought, Flam. He said, pushing his hat back. No shit it, brother of mine! Flam retorted, smacking his twin side with a huff. His glare returned to Apple Bloom, and his eyes narrowed. Now, you're going to be a good little filly and do what we say. Celestia and Luna are watching after all. The mustached stallion stated as he neared closer to the youngest apple. His horn was already beginning to radiate faintly green. Nuh-uh! I ain't trusting neither ya! What y'all doing here? Apple Bloom questioned. She backpedaled a bit in defense while Flam approached her. <laughs> Don't you already know? Revenge, you know? After your family humiliated us, it's high time we take back what's rightfully ours. Or rather, to put it more simply for your puny little brain, we're robbing you! Apple Bloom's eyes shrank as she realized she was in much more danger than she could probably handle. Thankfully, her fight-or-flight response was already kicking into high gear. Never! She cried out, springing forward between the two stallions. Her sudden outbursts surprised both of the brothers and left them fumbling for the flame filly. Flam's horn flashed brilliantly as he shot a green spark towards Apple Bloom, but ended up striking Flim instead. The resulting attack shot through Flim's body and caused him to twitch sporadically. That really chopped my hide, Flam. In bizarre retaliation, the clean-shaven stallion shot a bolt of green magic toward his brother. <laughs> Flam flopped onto the ground, the shock affecting him just as bad as it had to Flim. Ow! You stupid fence post! She's getting away! Despite how funny it was to the little filly, Apple Bloom continued galloping away from the farm and the brothers. Now wasn't the time for fooling around, and she wanted to find some help. Unfortunately for her, Flam and Flam were already back up and pursuing her. Help! Help! Somebody help! The brothers kept their chase, but couldn't quite catch up to her as their long legs almost hindered progress in the snow. It further frustrated them as Apple Bloom somehow rocketed ahead, the packed snow doing nothing thanks to her small weight. Hey, Bobby! By now, they had left Sweet Apple Lakers entirely and entered into Ponyville. The streets were covered just like the road from the farm, much of it left untouched. Sadly, it seemed every pony really had left for the holiday, and no pony was around to save the day. Give it up, kiddo! Flam shouted. They, too, knew that there was little hope for the filly. She would eventually tire out, and they would catch her. It was only a matter of time. If you stop now, we won't hurt you! But, hurt her? Flam, are you- <coughs> He shrieked as he ran headfirst into a low-hanging sign. The impact didn't knock him out, but it absolutely clotheslined the tall stallion and sent hooves over hooves into Flam. The two tumbled for a good distance, all while grunting in pain. Ow! Get up, Flam! She's getting away! Flam shouted angrily. They scrambled to their hooves, but the collision had given the filly more time to escape. Unfortunately for Apple Bloom, that didn't mean a whole lot since no pony was around to help her. Thank Apple Bloom, Mike! Where do I go now? The filly thought to herself as she kept running. She was almost out of Ponyville and quickly losing options. Luckily, her sight of the Everfree Forest ahead sparked an idea. Sakura! She has to be home! In her rush, however, Apple Bloom failed to notice the frozen pond just between her and the forest. 
As her hooves met the surface of the ice, she instantly lost traction and slipped onto the pond. <coughs> Lady Luck must have been smiling on the filly, though, as her momentum carried her forward without injury. The same would not be said for Flim and Flam when they stepped onto the pond. In nearer comic fashion, they immediately smashed through the ice and into the freezing water. Crashing into a powdery snow pile and creating a cute puff of snowflakes, Apple Bloom bolted away from the pond and into the forest. <coughs> Flam howled, pulling himself out of the frigid pond. When Flynn didn't resurface from below, the mustached stallion groaned angrily, but closed his eyes in concentration. His horn emanated faint green again, and soon, a giant ice cube emerged from the pond. Of course, Flynn was frozen inside. <coughs> Flynn growled, angered by both his brother's incompetence and that Applebloom had escaped. He glared at the offending force that now sheltered the filly he had pursued. That's right! Run! You can't stop us! We will get what we want and there's not a thing you can do about it! When there was no reply, the stallion grunted and began levitating his frozen brother with his magic. Come on, Blockhead. Our time has come. Meanwhile, Apple Bloom maintained her speed through the forest. She desperately wanted help now, and Sakura was the only one she was thinking about. One must know, however, it is unwise to do so in the Everfree Forest, especially during winter. The filly was soon assaulted with all manner of impeding natural elements. Low-hanging branches scratched at her hide. Roots tripped her hooves, and the declining temperature chilled Apple Bloom's very core. Of the worst phenomenons that the forest had to offer during the winter was something very curious. In the peculiar opposite of quicksand, there exists an icy counterpart that acts similar within the Everfree. This dangerous plan, known as Wintry Embrace, ensnares any being unfortunate enough to run afoul and eventually freezes them solid. This normally would be of little importance, but it so happened that poor Apple Bloom landed smack dab into its trap. She was so preoccupied with getting to Sakura's that she shrieked when her hooves were suddenly frozen to the small patch. <laughs> The filly screamed. Her struggling against the trap was in vain, though, as the ice crept faster up her legs. Help! The situation was very bleak and growing more so for Apple Bloom. No pony was around in town, and certainly not within the Everfree Forest, except for the feared shoveler who now approached her slowly. The stallion was still covered in thick clothing, dragging along the shovel in his mouth. He didn't say anything as he neared closer and closer. Apple Bloom's eyes widened in fear. No! Please, somebody help! The shovel's gonna get me! Her cries would go unheard, sadly, as the ice eventually encased the small filly. Slowly, her vision began to fade as she felt herself losing consciousness. I told y'all, I'm going back and you can't stop me! Applejack proclaimed, cinching the straps on her saddlebags upon her back. The orange mare was absolutely livid and her brother wasn't exactly helping. The two siblings were still situated within the Manhattan train station since they found out Apple Bloom was left behind. The rest of the Apple family had journeyed over to the Oranges to stay the night. Big Mac raised a huff in protest. Hey Jay, she's fine. 
We should wait for another train and then we can all go. I am not gonna wait a second longer. This never would have happened if I personally checked on Apple Bloom. Shame on y'all for trusting Mushy Core. I said I was sorry. Her brother quickly responded. He shook his head and stomped a hoof against the floor. It doesn't matter now. Let's just go get her. Applejack nodded, pushing her hat tighter onto her head. Bad time! Had enough chit chat. Without another word, she abruptly reared onto her hind hooves and launched forward into a full sprint. It took a moment, but her brother soon followed close behind her as they departed the station and galloped towards Ponyville. Please let her be safe. The orange cow pony thought to herself while speeding ahead. Regardless, Big Mac and Applejack were on their way. Did I do three takes on the others? <laughs> <laughs> I think I did, I can't remember. Uh, <clears throat> I, I just remembered, I was like, how many takes did I do? <laughs> I think I did enough, I think, I think I did. I, I am almost positive with how many bloopers I fucking have. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. <gasps> Today's heart's warming fucking shit! <laughs> I want to say today's Hearts Warmin Oh, it's the day before Hearts Warmin Eve. It's not even Hearts Warmin Eve yet. Fuck. <laughs> okay. It's the day before fucking Christmas, Apple Bloom. Get it right. Don't tell me what to do. I, I want it to be Hearts Warmin Eve. Everybody loves Hearts Warmin Eve. Almost as much as they love Halloween and Thanksgiving. Actually, Thanksgiving is, uh, you know, some people celebrate Hanukkah. Wait. Is it Hanukkah on Christmas? <laughs> no! <laughs> We're not doing this shit! I don't even remember anymore! <laughs> shit! I seriously don't remember. Now, I think Hanukkah is actually in December, if I remember right. Fuck! I don't even remember! <laughs> Where's the calendar? <laughs> Fuck it! It's not important right now, it's irrelevant. I need to do my lines. <laughs> Big Mac? Braeburn? Why am I concerned about Braeburn? That annoying ass little pony. Like Appaloosa. Fucking annoying ass cousin. <laughs> like I mean, I live in Ponyville while I live in Sweet Apple Acres, which is right across from Ponyville. But it's like, you know, I love Sweet Apple Acres, but you don't see me going at Sweet Apple Acres. Like, you know how annoying that would be? Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> like take the holes with balls of holly, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. I'm all alone with no pony to ruin hearts for me. For me. <laughs> that ad lib. Ah oh, yes, put it in there. <laughs> Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. <laughs> Fucking shit. Ah, shit. I closed my script. <laughs> Get back in the script! Thank you, <laughs> asshole. Alright. <clears throat> I'll also do some humming. <laughs> Oh, I would know that 
feeling so well. I used to live in a very cold area where it snowed all the freaking time. And I was not very good with ice. I'd slip all the fucking time. Every five seconds! I felt like Bambi. <laughs> <laughs> like serpentining through the trees, just slithering through the trees, like do 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 do. Like how oh, Slenderman is gonna get me? <laughs> oh gosh, that used to be me so bad. Oh gosh, that was great. That and eyes. Oh my gosh, I've only played eyes once or twice, and I hate that floating head so bad. It's just like, Argh! like, bitch, I gotta grab you by your weave and smash your ass against that wall. <laughs> Coming at me with your long ass hair. Don't even have a freaking neck or a body. You're just a head. <laughs> Oh gosh, oh, no. Shit. creepy as fuck. I'm not gonna wait a second longer! This never would have happened if I personally checked on Apple Bloom. Shame on you for trusting Mushy Core. That little shit ain't her zap apple jam being a little shit stain as he is. Man, Mushy Core, I don't even know why we invited you. I don't even know why you're a part of our family. Like, you should be removed. Damn, that was harsh. Okay, it's heartwarming, Eve. I'm gonna be a lot nicer to you. Like, don't wipe those crocodile tears off your face. You know how naughty you are. Like, don't even play. Don't even play the victim right now. You know what you did. You know. Okay? Fuck you. <laughs> Sorry. Fuck you. <clears throat> I don't even know why. <laughs> Deanna Jones. <laughs> Oh gosh, anyways. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Bye! Da -da 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 -da. I don't wanna lose you now. I'm looking right at the other half of me. The biggest little thing in my heart is the same, and there you go. Show me how to fight you now. And I tell you, baby, it was easy coming back into you once I figured it out. You were right here all alone It's like I'm a mirror oh, oh. My mirror staring back at me But with all of these wrinkles oh, oh. I wouldn't want to look at me Want to look at me I'm just saying I need a moisturizer That's better than what they sell At the salon or whatever it is I go to Yeah. The timber worms and timber worms I'm thinking Justin Timberlake. <laughs> okay, okay. No. <laughs> Justin Timberlake. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Go ahead, girl, go ahead, be gone with it. Go ahead, girl, go ahead, be 